chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. What does that mean? We, as workers together with him, we, Operating in cooperation with him. What will that mean? Come back to Moses. Moses had the rod. God has the power. And God said unto Moses. Now remember we are workers together with him. And Moses was working together with the almighty God. You don't need to feel the power. The power resides in God. And because the power resides in God, so that the rod, Lord, if I throw it down, what if it doesn't become what I thought it will become? Walk us together with God. You do your part, I'll do my part. Walk us together with God. You do the simple. Throw it down. I will do the hard, tough, impossible thing. I'll turn it to be a serpent. Walk us together with God. Here now, they came to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was in front of them. And the Egyptian army was behind. And then if you've studied it well, the mountains were on the sides. And the Israelites did not know how they would escape. Walk us together with him. Always the human being, the minister will do the simple. And then God the Almighty, he will do the mighty impossible thing. Stretch your rod and you stretch the rod. That's all you do. You are working together with God. You are not the one to do everything. God will do his part when you do your part. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you don't receive the grace of God in vain. It's like telling Moses that you don't receive the rod in vain. That you don't keep the rod in your hand in vain. Do the simple thing with that rod and then stretch it. And then the almighty God open the Red Sea. The Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it. You mention the name of Jesus. That's all you do. That's all you do. You do your part. And then the Lord will do what you couldn't have done. Just mention the name of Jesus. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And then it goes on now and it says in verse 7, By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the word of truth, by the word of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, the ammo, the weapon of the word of truth and the power of God. This power will do something today. Roll mountains away today. Destroy the words of the devil today. And set you free today in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What does that mean? For the weapons of our warfare are not human. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. The weapons of our warfare are not natural. Because I told you already, every natural sin, every fleshly sin, every carnal sin, every common sin, every created sin, every earthly sin has deterioration embedded in it. 
That means then, if you depend on natural, earthly, carnal, human, created sin, it will fail. Because it, you know, it might work for some time, but it comes to a point. Every created weapon is limited in its effectiveness. But now it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. The weapons we have, the armor we have, the power that comes to our age, it says it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. You are wondering what that means. You know, as so you go back to Genesis chapter 6, don't open, I'll just tell you. It says, every imagination of the thought of the hearts of the antediluvian people, the people before the flood, it was evil. And as you look at humanity, you'll find that maybe there's an enemy in your locality. And he doesn't have any other thing to do, but he centers all his, all his attention on you. He doesn't have any goal, anything to achieve in your street, in your community. And he centers all his attention, all his resources on you. And the imagination of his heart is that he'll bring you down. Never mind, you have conquered him already. The imagination of the heart. Have you thought about Lucifer? The imagination of his heart. I will, I will, I will. Many times, but there is a weapon that will cast down all the imaginations and the heart of Satan. All the imagination in the heart of sinners. All the imagination in the heart of the wicked people. And then when God has brought down, leveled, destroyed, demolished, destroyed all the sins, the Lord will lift you up. Casting down imaginations. Now, your own imagination. Your own imagination. There's a little sickness. And then you sit down. And you are thinking, there's sickness. And then as you begin to think, and you begin to make your conclusions, it is not the sickness that is weakening you, it's your thoughts, your imagination on the sickness. And you are saying, you're kind of calculating, this has happened, I feel this symptom, and I hear this sound, and I see this effect, and I feel this pain, and I know this is what had happened to all the people before that had a sickness like this. And those imaginations, they are the things that almost destroy your face. But there is a weapon here this morning. The unfailing power of God will cast down all the imagination in your heart in Jesus' name. Casting down imaginations and Every high sin that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity. Bringing into captivity. Look up here. And you know, sometimes as you look at the history of the people of the world, and you look at how things go, you'll find sometimes the powers that be, they will pick up a man. That man is a threat to them, a threat to their government, a threat to their progress, a threat to their ambition. They pick him up. And then they find this reason and this reason and that reason. And then they put him in captivity in the cell. And he's in the prison there. And then they might say, they calculate how many years they want to remain on that throne and be leading and be ruling. And they calculate that, you know, if they are in their 50s now, if, uh, you know, they will change this and change that in their nation, in their country, they might be able to live up to 80 
And if they are going to live up to 80, that means they need 30 years of no molestation. Therefore, they pick up this man and then they put him in the prison. And they might say he's going to be in the prison for 40 years. But they are thinking by the time he comes out, they would have died. And then they will rule for life. And then, have you seen the history of the world? How things will change. And the man that puts the other fellow in the prison, that man then is out of power. And the one they put in the prison, that man comes out of the prison. And then he even becomes the captain of the people. And then becomes the king or the leader. Or he becomes the president of the country. And then he turns around and he looks at that man if he's not dead yet. And then he brings him into captivity. That's what the Bible is saying here. Look at it yourself. Casting our imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself. Against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. If you are brought into captivity before the tables are turning, the things are changing. You will come out of that captivity. And all those that put you in the captivity, it is now their turn. I said it is now their turn. I don't know what music, uh, all the presidents in Babylon at the time of the reels. I don't know what kind of music and party they were having in the night. Because they now got rid of Daniel. They have brought Daniel into captivity. All through that night, didn't I tell you, didn't I, well, get that man. Didn't I tell you, well, incarcerate that man. Didn't I tell you, well, bring him into captivity. You know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's running too fast. And it's getting too much promotion. And then, well, we did imagination. Our imagination now incarcerated him. And then, all of a sudden, in the morning, the king rose up. And he went to the lion's den. And with a lamentable voice, he cried. Daniel, Daniel, it's your God whom you serve day and night. Is he able to deliver you out of the mouth of the lion? And Daniel shouted back. He will shout. I said he will shout. He shouted back. He said, oh king, I am still here. The God of heaven, his power is unlimited. His power is unfailing. He has sent his angels and he shot the lion's mouth that they could not hurt me. He said, Daniel, servant of the living God, come out. Today you will come out. There is a power in heaven that operates on earth for the people of God. He came out and then they examined Daniel. There was no hurt in him. He only went on vacation when he was in the lion's den. And then they said, now all the princes and all their families, please come here. And they came and then it was their turn. It was their turn. The people that put Daniel in captivity, it was their turn to come into captivity. Never mind, you have conquered. Never mind, you have overcome. Because there is the wonder of God and there is the weapon of the unfailing power of the Almighty God casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And therefore the power, that same power today will work in your life. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. And I'm reading there from verse 17. Here is a special gift for you coming from your father and coming to you. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And what the Lord is telling you is, you should think about the weapons of warfare that the Gentiles have. The weapons of warfare that the natives have. The weapons of warfare that all those sorcerers, all those witches and wizards that they have. And then see your own weapon, the weapon of God's unfailing power. And then as you see, their own weapon of wickedness. And their own weapon of the world. As you see, their own weapon of evil. And then you see your own weapon, the very power of God that will never fail. The power of God in your life will destroy everything coming from the world in Jesus' name. That's why it says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. How those magicians of Egypt, how they came with force. How they came with determination. This Moses, what does he make of himself? Will deal with him. He doesn't understand that we have something. They had something, but not something will be swallowed up. I said it will be swallowed up. And so they came. And as they came, Moses told Throw that rod now. Let Pharaoh see because he's asking. Show me a sign that says that God has sent you to pick out and to take out the children of Israel. Show me a sign. Give me a sign. And then he threw down the rod. It became something. 